to a roar. Alpine Stories. July 14, 1914 was really cold. The ground, and especially the mountains up here, were thick with snow. A very sick man was brought down from his hut in the mountains here to the town of Koryong, but he never made it. And here he rests in the Koryong Cemetery. It's time to put aside the myths and put aside the legends. It's time for some groundbreaking and probably definitive journalism. Let's don the hat and ask Koryong the question. Was Jack the man? As soon as you arrive in Koryong, the claims that you're in man from snowy river country are everywhere. I arrived a bit of a skeptic, knowing that it's not documented that Banjo Patterson claimed Jack Riley as the man. On the contrary, there's anecdotal evidence Banjo told friends that the man was no one specific person. The town hosts the Man From Snowy River Bush Festival each year and it kicks off with Riley's Ride, coordinated by Natalie Moak. The, the whole thing is that we're following the route of Jack Riley's last ride. The, the, um, he was a very sick and dying old man and a group of fellas were seeking to bring him back to Koryong for medical attention and he actually passed away en route. And so we follow in those footsteps and it leads into the festival here. For me, he's one of those people that lived a life and was probably the sort of character that we all love to dream about. You know, that, that being self-sufficient to a degree and, and living that isolation, not having to put up with people when you didn't want to and being able to get out in all that magnificent country with your horse um, it is a dream come true. Did Banjo Patterson know Jack Riley? Banjo Patterson was good friends with Walter Mitchell and Walter Mitchell owned Bringabrong Station in 1890, early 1890. Walter Mitchell took Banjo up to visit Jack at Tom Grogan. They stayed with Jack and then Jack took them he guided them up Kosciuszko to the South Ram's Head, through the Cascade Country, the Pilot, um, back to Grogan. And, and Banjo Patterson penned the poem shortly after that. To me, there's no doubt that that encounter was his inspiration for writing his magnificent poem, The Man from Snow River. This was getting rather interesting, and I felt my scepticism beginning to subside. Nat suggested we hit the main street and put the big question to the locals. Tradition and story says he was the man. Uh, given a little bit of, let me see, um, storyteller's licence, he could have been the man. You've got to have somebody that uh, you can refer to and I think he's as good as anybody, so why not? I think he was an inspiration for the man. Okay. Like, main inspiration. I reckon he was. He was the man. Yes, I have. I've listened, read, sung every one of Banjo Patterson's poems and he was the man. What, what are you making news about? Oh, we've, we've, <laughs> Richard's, Richard's trying to find out a bit more about Jack Riley. Oh, yeah. And the whole thing. Now, was don't, it, don't run off, Jack. Was Jack the man? Well, uh, as old Tom Mitchell said, if he wasn't, it makes a good story. <laughs> <laughs> it does bear for a bit of research though, it really does. And it's interesting because you find out lots and lots of other things as you go looking for the story about Jack Riley, the man from Snowy River. The local baker gave me a copy of Jack's obituary, an enormous write-up from 1914. And one teenager even said Jack's grave offers believers a mystical experience. You know, it's supposed to glow in the dark. Hey, Gun. Hey, Gun. Don't you mean that? <laughs> what happens? It's supposed to go in the dark, isn't it? On a full moon. Is that right? And have you been up there? Yes. I was getting closer to Jack by the minute. 
and jumped at the chance to meet cattleman Tom Lebner and Keith Whitsed. Tom's grandmother even knew the man himself. Every so often Jack Riley would ride down from the mountains into Corion to get his supplies. And he used to stop at Hickey's house overnight on the way through and have a, a no doubt a drink of something with Mr Hickey. And uh, my grandma sometimes would be staying with the Hickeys because she was friendly with the Hickey girls. At, they were her age and grandma could remember Jack Riley riding down, leading a pack horse, and Jack wore a suit, and he had a grey beard that used to part as he trotted along, used to part over his shoulders. And uh, he's an old man then, he was fairly old. And uh, yeah, they, Grandma said Mr Hickey and Jack would drink a, you know, a few whiskies or whatever and, and start till late at night. Then on the way, he'd go to Corrie and get his supplies, and on the way back he'd stop again that night. And then next morning you'd head off to back to Tom Groggan. And uh, Grandma said that she used to be a bit wary of this old Jack Riley. He, he looked a bit spooky. <laughs> he's, you know, he's, he's an old man and I don't think he had a lot of time for the children. Keith, can I ask you, what sort of a person do you think Jack Riley would have been? I, I think he would have been a fairly abrupt, uh, cranky old man. I think uh, Tom said that they, uh, he didn't have much time for the kids. I think that would be right. And, uh, what would Jack Riley think of all the fuss that's made about him now and uh, the status that he holds in Corio? I, I think he would be very honoured by it, but uh, uh, would, by the same take, would be very sceptical about it, I think. But, Tom's dad, Len Lebner, a retired cattle farmer, volunteers at the Man From Snowy River Museum, which houses Jack Riley's saddlebags and pocket watch. Len has no doubt that Jack was the man. I mean, what started him going? What inspired Banjo Patterson to, to write this poem? If he you know, didn't interview people. He actually interviewed Jack, just like you're interviewing me now. You can be sure he was picking Jack's brains as hard as he could go. Here, have another whiskey, lad. You can be sure of that, I feel. So what have we got here? Jack Riley's watch. See on the right of the bell there? That's his pocket watch. Now then, what have we got in the other room of Jack? Ah, Richard, yeah, Jack's saddlebag. That's our, one of our features. There it is. It was getting a bit ragged. I stitched it up. Did you? When we got it, yes. But yeah, they are Jack Riley saddlebags. Unable to stay for the full moon, I visited Jack's resting place once more during daylight hours, and I felt humbled. No longer a skeptic, but a true convert, a believer that Jack Riley was the man from Snowy River, and that Banjo had never revealed this publicly in order to preserve Jack and his way of life. <laughs>